A company called Electro have kindly sent me their five inch touchscreen to use in this project. So big thanks to them for sending that through. Let's do a quick unboxing of that and see what you get. Okay, so inside we have a pack of wires there. We'll take a look in, in there. Um, got some standoffs, some screws. Got instructions on how to get that working with the Raspberry Pi and the settings and details the, uh, the buttons you can use for the menu. A bit more on a quick start guide. It's got drivers uh, for the touchscreen component. Uh, those are also available on their website. And then the screen itself. Now there was a protect, another protective layer on that, which I've removed. Um, but as you can see, it's also got another one here, which I've kept on nearly all of the time. You probably notice it in some of the other videos, kept it on just because of the uh, DIY that I've been doing and didn't want to get any damage to the screen there. Um, so that's what we've got there. So let's just take a look in that packet, see what connectors we've got. Okay, so we've got a micro USB cable. That looks about 30 centimeters long. And then we've got a USB cable here, like the, uh, the flat cable that they've used there. That's kind of cool. And that's about 30 centimeters long. Looks really good. And then we've got a HDMI to mini HDMI connector here. So that will allow you to connect it up to a newer Raspberry Pi 4, which have those, uh, those small HDMI connectors. Okay, so let's take a look at the unit itself. So got the screen there, obviously. Um, and that protective layer that I talked about earlier. Uh, going around to the side here, we've got headphone out. Um, so it will do HDMI audio. So the audio will come into the HDMI socket. Uh, there's no speaker in this, um, but you can get the audio back out through the headphone jack, which is quite neat. And then we've got two micro USB sockets here. Um, one is for power and the other one could be for touch. So you can power the screen from an adapter using one of the sockets and then the other socket can go to the computer that you're using. So it might be a Raspberry Pi or a PC, and then that can go into one of the USB sockets to act as the touch driver. Uh, like I say, so we've got HDMI, uh, the headphone out, and two of those micro USB sockets. If you are connecting it to a PC, you can actually power the whole screen from the uh, USB socket on the PC. Then on this other side, We've got the menu buttons. So we've got touch buttons here, uh, hit the menu button, and then it'll bring on the on-screen display, uh, up and down, uh, return from that menu, and a manual power button. The screen resolution is 800 by 480, uh, and that's at 60 hertz. Uh, so just make sure, especially on Windows, that it's using the right settings. I certainly had to go into the uh, display drivers and select the uh, correct resolution. Windows seemed to want to do it at 800 by 600, and that came out looking a bit squashed. Um, but uh, do have a look at those settings and make sure that they're correct for this device. Now the capacitive touchscreen should be a lot more responsive than some of the other models where it's resistive. Uh, so resistive is where you have to sort of push down that will track your finger across the screen. Capacitive is more like your phone, uh, where it's reading an electrical contact off your finger. So it should be a lot more accurate. Not had a chance to have a look at any of that on the PC, um, but for my purposes, we don't need the touchscreen input. So what we'll do is quickly set this up with the Raspberry Pi. So here's one that I grabbed earlier. And now I'm gonna hook all of this up to battery power, including the screen. So we'll use their, their neat HDMI cable, plug that in. Okay, so that's plugged into the Pi. And then we use another power bank to power the screen. Plug that in there. Okay, I've rejigged that a little bit so it's a bit more pointed at the screen. Uh, so we'll power on the Raspberry Pi. And there we go. That's booting up. The uh, screen is bright enough, especially if you are using this as a secondary display on your PC uh, and it's going to be inside a PC case or attached to the side of the screen, it's a really good level of brightness. Okay, so that's booted up. Um, obviously in the menu system here, so I'm pressing the buttons on the side and we can go through, oh, that was a return, menu at the top, and then we can go through the options here. 
One thing I did do was uh, go in and uh, set the aspect ratio to auto earlier on and that worked quite well on the PC. So I went in there and set it from 16 by, by 9 to auto and that helped with uh, some of the resolution issues that I was seeing on the PC. Uh, I wouldn't mess with sharpness uh, unless you have any particular problem. Uh, let's go back up so you can see some of the other options in there. I don't think there's especially a lot that you're going to have to tinker with. Uh, I don't think you'd be in this menu a lot. The menu there says that we're at 54 on the brightness, so it can go higher. So let's try that. That's your maximum. Take it back down to 54 because that background was getting too uh, kind of grey. Anyway, you can tinker with those to uh, your satisfaction, um, but the out of the box settings, apart from that aspect ratio, uh, I've kind of left those alone. So really, just straight out of the box, this works and it's gonna be fantastic to use it in this project. One of the things I like about it are these tabs that you get across the corners. Uh, that allows me to attach it quite nicely into the frames that we're gonna be using. If you don't need these, you can just snip them off. Um, they're not that thick on the board. Uh, you could probably use some wire cutters or something to, uh, to clip those off uh, quite easily. Um, overall, I think this is a really well designed board. Resolution looks really good. It really suits DIY projects very well. It also comes with all the right cables and connectors, so you can really get up and running quickly. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.